Rahmatullah. Rahmatullah. She says, Mom's around, however, father's passed away. Mom works in the morning and she comes back uh, home and then she has work in the evening. Wow. In the morning, she works in the home, in the care home itself, the orphanage, and in the afternoon, she works in the university. So, wow. as a single mother, she's juggling quite a lot. The loss of a husband, three orphans, and full time work. It's not as if she doesn't want to do anything and she's not. Mornings with Ali starts with a bit of bread, a sip of tea. Ali's life is tough. His dad passed away six months ago and joined his mother. Every day, Ali pushes the heavy trolley. It's his only hope for a simple meal. It's tough, you know? He's pushing hard, but it's like he's invisible. Finally, a few boxes come his way. But the cash, barely enough. He looks at the kebab shop with regret. Unable to afford even a piece of fruit. It's dark and cold. He came home empty-handed again. He pulls out a picture of his dad. Oh, dad, if you were here, I would not suffer these difficulties. Empower change with your impactful donation. Supporting orphans like Ali for a brighter future through Imam Hussein Charity. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على خير الأنبياء والمرسلين وحبيبي إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين Distinguished guests, dear brothers and sisters, dear viewers at home السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to Imam Hussein Charity's Salam Ya Ali campaign throughout these very very horrible nights, these nights of sadness, these nights of connecting to Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib and also connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the nights of Qadr, we will give you the Salam Ya Ali campaign, an opportunity for you dear viewers to send your blessings, to send your allegiances, to send any comments, any messages that you have to Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Now Imam Ali alayhi salam we know is a man of the people. Imam Ali salam lived amongst men and women as if they are his equal. Imam Ali salam lived amongst them because he wanted to give them an example of what a true ruler is supposed to be like. The Imam is just like the feeble people. Now according to the philosophy of Imam Ali salam, a ruler must imitate the most feeble people of his subjects in food, in dress, and house. He السلام, is thus reported to have said, Verily, as Allah the All Exalted has made me the leader of His creatures, He imposed upon me constriction in my personal affairs, my food, my drink, and my dress, just like the feeble people, so that the poor will pattern after my poverty, and the rich will not be made despotic due to His richness. In the same connection, Imam Ali is reported to have said, Certainly, Allah the Sublime has made it obligatory 
on true leaders that they should maintain themselves at the level of low people so that the poor do not cry over their poverty. In the view of Imam Ali السلام, a ruler is no more than a caretaker whose responsibility is to drive people to decency, supply them with their needs, reform their affairs and guide them to the straightest path. Imam Ali السلام, we have seen on social media, we have seen on our phones, we have seen the footage directly from the shrine of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib in the Fajr prayer last night when the Fajr adhan was being given Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah and the moment when the, 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 the testimony of testifying to the wilaya of Amir al-Mu'mineen the lights all went off in the shrine of Ali ibn Abi Talib and then the lights came on and they were red signifying that Ali ibn Abi Talib was struck in his prayer a man who was so devout and his faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is incomparable we will talk about the quality of his faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before that we will spend a couple of words of poetry in honor of Amir al-Mu'mineen and saying that even if they take our souls when they look deep into our eyes, they'll see there your glorious shrine and weep as our tongues still recite Ali. Our tongues still recite Ali. The pupils in men's eyes known to be windows to the soul. If they peer into ours, they'll see none. You've swallowed it whole. All they'll see is lamb and meme. As the Ain they crown and condole, and toward three letters every inch of my being crawls. After you, there is no me, no inch left in my own being, except that you I am seeing daily, I'm living and breathing. Ali, daily I'm living and breathing. Ali, other men are of clay, while we are made up of Najaf. Other men are made of clay while we are made up of Najaf. Other men are of dust while we are made up of belief. When we fall, when in pain, when we are drowning deep in grief, with the call, Ya Ali, the heart finds nothing but relief. The heart finds nothing but relief in the remembrance of you, heart soften and become content while its enemies still lament with one name we are triumphant with one name we are triumphant Ali with one name we are triumphant Ali ibn Abi Talib once again dear brothers and sisters this show is dedicated to Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib and it's a salam ya Ali campaign please do get in touch with us you are live, you will be live on air to send your salams to Ali ibn Abi Talib, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Imam al-Muttaqeen, Sayyid al-Wasiyyin, Imam Ali alayhi salam. You will be directly connected to Amir al-Mu'mineen. So you can send your salams, you can send your messages, you can send your heartfelt struggles and desires to Ali ibn Abi Talib and so that he can hear you on a night like this. On a night like this, brothers and sisters, Sayyidah Zainab, our hearts go towards Sayyidah Zainab, our hearts go towards the family of Amir al-Mu'mineen because after he was struck, the second day he was on his bed and the doctors were informing Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein and the rest of the family of the situation of Imam Ali alayhi salam and that is where he would give his final will and that is where we hear the narrations where he brings together Abil Fadl al-Abbas and Sayyidah Zainab and he says to Abil Fadl al-Abbas that Sayyidah Zainab is now the one that you have to look after. You will look after her, you are her guide, you are her path. Make sure you look after Sayyidah Zainab salam until the events that unfolded in Karbala years and years later where he was not able to, he was not able to fulfill all of his, 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 uh, his request. So we ask you, oh dear viewers that you are watching at home to pledge your allegiance to Abin al-Mu'maneen. And of course, Imam Hussein Charity does some fantastic work in Iraq. Specifically, we are 
raising funds for three specific campaigns across this month of Ramadan. One of them is the iftar pack and inshallah we can see some footage of the iftar packs that have been donated to all of the underprivileged people in Iraq and specifically not just in Karbala but in Karbala and Najaf and many other cities across Iraq, those who need it most. These iftar packs, they have within them rice and lentils and some meat and oil and whatever that they can put together so that they are able to break their fast. And dear brothers and sisters, we ask you in the name of Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib to donate and to contribute toward these noble causes, especially on these nights. One of the most recommended acts on these nights is to give charity. And that is why we are asking you, dear viewers, to pledge a small contribution in the name of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. Once you do donate, say salam ya Ali. We are donating in the name of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Because the other campaign that we have for this month of Ramadan is that of the orphan campaign. Where we are saying that Amir al-Mu'mineen is the father of orphans. And so we ask you to donate and contribute in the name of Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib. Who was the father of orphans. You can see on your screens there the amount of iftar packs that have been uh, readied and distributed across Iraq. At this moment, we have just passed the number of 100,000, 100,000 meals, 100,000 iftar packs. That is a minimum. We are trying to get it to 150,000 so that 150,000 fam 150, families have something to eat during the month of Ramadan. Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, his faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unshaken because the most incomparable quality of Imam Ali salam is that he was the most faithful to Almighty Allah and the most knowledgeable of him. He is thus reported to have said, even if the covering that the veils of the, the veils were uncovered or is revealed before me, this will by no means increase my current conviction لو كشف عن الغطاء مزددت يقينا expressing his deep faith in Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he alayhi salam also says oh my god I worship you on account of neither fear of your chastisement nor desire for your reward rather I found you the worthiest of being worshipped therefore I do this is the very worship of those who turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only and recognize him with thorough recognition. Imam Ali alayhi salam has dedicated his entire life to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inviting to him and striving for his sake with sincerity as is due to him. Historians relate that when Imam Ali alayhi salam could... Uh, he goes out looking for work, lifting, and it all started off when he was younger, he fell. And because they didn't have enough financial support, they didn't go to treat him. These people have very little, but they are still happy with what they have. And the best thing they say is that they rely on God and people of good faith. Let's ensure that they will always sleep with a full stomach. They will wake up knowing that there'll be food for them to eat and ensure that they will take their medication on time. It is your donations, your support that will make a change in their lives. Join the fight for a brighter tomorrow because kindness is the currency that truly matters. I'm here. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back, dear viewers of Imam Hussein Charity. We are joined uh, for the first time, I believe, on Imam Hussein Charity, maybe, but it doesn't matter. First yes. time, second Imam time. Imam Hussein Charity, but I've been, alhamdulillah, had the privilege of coming on Imam Hussein. Fantastic. Charity. Beside me is the talented reciter, Kazim Uka. Thank you yes. so much for joining the show. Thank first you. of all, I guess before we get into the recitations, I, you know, these nights of Qadr, uh, in the first two weeks, or maybe actually, you know, a couple of days ago, how did you? Does, do you prepare yourself for the nights of Qadr and, and for the recitation and the nights of the Amir al-Mu'mineen? How, how do you go about processing and preparing for, for these, these uh, specific nights? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it is, particularly within the, kind of the Indo-Pak community, a lot of the reciters that are based in Pakistan start releasing Nahas okay. sort of up to, uh, coming up to the 19th night across yeah. YouTube and other platforms. So I kind of psych myself up by listening to them. I'm a you know, fan of many of them. Um, and then also going through particular, you know, past nahas, maybe some of which I'll be able to come onto today. Yeah. That I love, that I related to Imam Ali alayhi salam. So it's important to get yourself in the in that kind of right frame of mind. Yeah. Or maybe just turn up on the 19th night. Yeah. But you kind of need to actually put yourself 
within, for example, Imam Ali's shoes and yep. those last few days of his life, yeah. what he must have experienced. Yeah, yeah. In terms of the recitations that you have for today, is it, I believe it's both a bit of English, but mostly yeah, I wanted, I wanted to recite um, something brief in English at the beginning. Okay. I don't tend to recite much English, but yeah. actually, whenever I've come on to Imam Hussein TV, I always try my best. Bismillah. Um, just given kind of the viewership, but yeah, my kind of forte is certainly Urdu. So, inshallah, time permitting, I'll, I'll inshallah. Urdu as well. Inshallah. inshallah. So, we'd love to hear the English first, and then we'll inshallah. get into the Urdu. Bismillah. Please recite aloud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali So, this is a very Muhammad. popular um, English noha. Um, written actually by the Tajani brothers, okay. so it's it's dedicated to both Imam Ali and to Imam Hussein Ali. Mashallah. So I thought I'd recite that. Please recite another loud salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Live like Ali, die like Hussein. Live like Ali. Die like Hussein, live like Ali, die like Hussein. Allah loves all who have love for Muhammad in their hearts. He is the city of knowledge, Ali its door and path. Hussein and Prophet Muhammad can never be apart Because this is what Muhammad has said of from the start Hussein Hussein Omini wa ana min al Hussein Hussein Live like Ali Die like Hussein Live like Ali, die like Hussein. For life and death they are the guidance and philosophy, the sacrifice of Hussein and the way of life of Ali. You only need to look at the final sujood of each. This is the art of life and death we should try to achieve. Hussein, these were the words of Ali. Fustubi Rabbi Kaaba. Live like Ali, die like Hussein. Live like Ali, die like Hussein. When growing up we have been taught this lesson every day Without a doubt you have been born to serve the Ahlul Bayt For loving them you may face torture, agony and pain But every time you should never be scared to face that head Hussein, the bravery of Ali is what you should always show. Live like Ali, die like Hussein. Live like Ali, die like Hussein. Live like Ali, die like Hussein. Salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Ahsantum. Ahsantum. So inshallah the, the, the Urdu recitation you want to do now as well? I'm more than happy to inshallah yeah. with, your, with your permission. Please, please recite a salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. So this is a, a salam or a mercy typically recited in sort of sitting down style as you'd see in the Indo-Pak community. Yeah. Um, so what that means is there is a body being taken out of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. So it's alluding to the morning of the 19th of Ramadan after Imam Ali alayhi salam was struck and then was taken out of, of Masjid al-Kufa and back right. to his house. So it's a very, very um, heavy salam. So those of you that are listening, even if you don't necessarily understand the wordings, try and put yourself as if you're in Masjid al-Kufa right now, right. right? On these nights we pray that we are in Kufa or Najaf, inshallah. In the coming years, we have that privilege, but do put yourself in that mindset as if you're beside our, our Imam. Salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. 
निकला है जनाजा कोई अल्लाह के गए से निकला है जनाजा कोई अल्लाह के गए से अफलाक में एक शोर है मातम के असर से अफसोस के मशिद में नमाज गया मारा अफसोस के मशिद में नमाज गया मारा कुछ कम नहीं ये हशर कयामत के असर से निकला है जनाजा कोई अल्लाह के गए से अब जरा नबे मुजत से खबरदार अब जरा नबे मुझे से खबरदार फरियाद में हट जा ना चादर कहीं से से निकला जनाजा कोई अल्लाह के घर से शबेर को याद आ गए खुद अपने सके शबेर को याद आ गए खुद अपने सके ना अरे जैन अब को हटाया गया जब लाश पे दे जनाजा कोई अल्लाह के गए से हाँ भोल न जाना इन्हें कोफे के मके गु 
گزرینگے یہ شہزادیاں اس را گزر سے نکلا ہے جنازہ کوئی Thank you so much for that recitation. Um, aside from the, the, the recitations, you personally, have you been to Iraq um, recently? Alhamdulillah, yes. So I was there just uh, December. So okay. Alhamdulillah, myself and my dad, we have the pleasure of taking the qafila. I, I okay. often, often tend to meet you there in Iraq. Yeah. So I've been lucky. I tend to go there year on year, Alhamdulillah. Okay, so fantastic, fantastic. Um, have you been outside of the 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 shrine area? Have you have you ever seen what it's like outside of the the hustle and bustle of the shrine area? Did you do you in know Najaf or in Karbala? In or? Karbala, or actually in Najaf as well. Any anywhere? Both, yeah. yeah. I'd say so. Alhamdulillah, the best time I find to go is kind of later at night, okay, midnight, one a.m. and that's when it. Excuse me, tends quiet. to be sort of quietest. No, but as, like I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to allude to is, is, mm. is the fact that during, say, seasons, yeah. there is a lot of people, obviously, there's, there's a while that are heading towards the, the lights, where mm. the shrines are, and, yes. and that's where the main kind of city yes. area is. But outside of that, I'm not yes. sure if you know... I, I have been a few times here. Outside, like... like yeah, in, so in, I've, I've been outside. I've visited, I, think, I believe it's the Bani Asad tribe there. I did some charity work a few years ago, okay. distributing food parcels and and whatnot to some some communities, some local Iraqi brothers that I know have had the pleasure nice. of visiting their homes sort of just on the outskirts of What, of were, this, what were the situations there. like? Pretty dire. Yeah. Um, you see particularly when you bring around food and water and things like that, that there is a clear kind of sense of desperation and it does make you think, given the turmoil, the political unrest, the war that Iraq has kind of gone through over yeah. the past number yeah. of years, yeah. and you kind of reflect on the kinds of lives that people live there. Yet the beautiful thing is particularly you see in Urbain is how selfless those people are. Yeah. And they never feel as if they don't have a little. I feel like in Western countries, a lot of the time, we do tend to kind of have that first world mindset in, you know, complaining about this problem and that problem. And I tell myself first, but their people, mashallah, are so content. Fantastic, fantastic. Once again, really appreciate your time. Inshallah, we can see you more on Imam Hussain Charity and Imam Hussain TV in the near future. Inshallah. Uh, cousin, thank you so much for, thank your, you so for, much. for your time. Thank you, We're going to go to a small break, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very small. Inshallah, when we're back, a bit more poetry and a bit more pledges to a heart that we give you these shows, these Salam Ya Ali shows, because there has been a lot of reports of our close ones um, and young ones uh, passing away. Um, only recently in Tanzania, a dear friend of ours uh, who was quite young, um, he, he passed away in the nights of Qadr. And uh, only today in Northwest London, we've also heard reports of uh, one of the community members who have passed away in a majlis, uh, attending the majlis of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, and also breaking his fast um, and then passing away. Um, so. Life, and it's just, it's kind of shocked me uh, because life uh, is very, very transient, it's very quick. One day you might be thinking that you're the healthiest person in the world, you're on top of the world, you have everything under control, and all of a sudden, within, within a matter of seconds, your soul is taken away from you. And that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided there and then um, that you know, your soul is to return to Him. So in this small amount of time that we have, what are we going to do with that time? Are we going to waste it by committing sins? Are we going to waste it by wasting our time on meaningless acts like social media and television and Netflix and all of that stuff? Just flicking away show after show after show, just wasting your life? Or are we going to do something meaningful and leave an, 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 an impactful uh, life so that others after us may yitrahamun alayna? So they send our blessings on us and say to us, after we've passed away, you know, thank God, you know, this person existed and this person gave what he gave so that we benefited from that. One of the ways that you can do that is by performing sadaqah jariyah, right? And one of the sadaqah jariyahs that we have is a water well. It's an absolutely amazing uh, initiative to build a water well so that anyone who does a wudu or anyone who uh, uses the water just to drink uh, or wash or whatever it is that want to use it for, you will receive that benefit. That's just one of the ways. Or for example, you could put a smile on an orphan's face. 
Um, that alone will, is so massive in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It means you're doing something meaningful with your life. Because once again, life is very, very short. It's what we do in this life that counts towards the hereafter. I'm not going to get into a philosophical um, conversation. Uh, it's not really my job. But what I'm all, all I'm asking you to do, and, and I am the vehicle to let you know that Imam Saint Charity is doing some fantastic work, really meaningful work, to make a change in our, in our lives. We are living in the West, you know, uh, we have everything that we need. We have the lights, we have the food, we have the water, we have the sustenance, we have the safety, we have the hope, we have the dreams, we have the aspirations. There are people out there that don't have any of that, literally any of that. They live day by day not knowing where their next meal is going to be, not, let alone do they have dreams and aspirations. So make a change, brothers and sisters, in the name of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, who was so close to the Holy Prophet, who was so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask you to never forget us, inshallah, in your du'as, Imam Hussein Charity. Don't forget your brothers and sisters around the world, those who need it most. And inshallah, we'll see you very, very soon in tomorrow's episode of Salam Ya Ali. And inshallah, we will see you then. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am here in Karbala, near the football stadium, which is just over there, past them houses and so forth. I just want to show you the conditions and just the environment a lot of people are living in here. So, we are helping widows and orphans and so forth with the Mountain Charity, and they live in little huts like this, which have been semi made. They're all the, 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 you know I mean, they can't afford much. Most of them can only afford to make walls, and then they'll go out and try and find what they can to make a roof and, and whatever. But this landfill is a reality for most people. I've seen children playing around places like this. There's also sometimes you know, dead animals and things like that. Now, the reason we want to bring this to attention is that this is really, really not healthy. Things like this attract animals, attracts vermin. And then if you've got people living here and you've got kids playing here, then they are susceptible to allergies to illnesses to bad hygiene and furthermore which is really really dangerous is that they can cause plastics to melt and so forth to release certain chemicals which in turn can can cause cancer for these people simply because they just live around a landfill like this so many flies mosquitoes mosquitoes can cause malaria and so forth but also the animals that come here dogs i've seen so many dogs now if dogs are living in places like this they don't see vets, they're not checked out regularly, and 100% they all carry diseases. And God forbid, if they come into contact with a human being, then those diseases will be passed on. This is why, brothers and sisters, it is so vital for you to help support Imam Hussein Charity with campaigns where we're trying to give orphans and widows food, shelter, medication, and education, and hopefully they can work their way out of living conditions like this. Donate now www.imamhusseincharity.com Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm here in Karbala, uh, close to the Karbala football stadium, and we've come to an area here where all the local kids have just come to see us because they never ever get visitors, they never ever see camera equipment, media team, or anything like that. And with these kids, you see all of them are smiling, they're so happy just to see, you know, people, the smallest things will make them so happy. This guy here hasn't stopped smiling since I came, and they invited me to his home, and he was saying, Come inside, sit inside. All these kids have been taking pictures. This little one, look at her, she can't even put, you know. She can't even stop showing her teeth, mashallah. But it's the little things that make these kids happy. And all you guys need to do is store it a little bit so we can give these guys even medicine, and education, uh, help them with their schoolwork, um, food. Uh, even we'll take them out for a day. We'll take them to the park, we'll take them to get some food, we'll give them a present, new clothes and so forth. 
all this can be achievable with your help and your donations. So visit us at emergencycharity.com to see the latest campaigns where we can come and help children like these. من كان ابونا موجود متكفين من كل الامور لكن بعد وفاته هواي الامور تغيرت يعني مسؤوليه اولاد وعندي بنيه يعني مرينا بظروف كلش صعبه وفاته عنده خبيث بالمعده وتوفى باول يوم رمضان سنه 2021 Brothers and sisters, I can't emphasize how difficult it is to sit and hear the cries of those who are in need and they don't need, they're not asking for much, they're only asking for the basic. If Abu Muhammad had the enough financials to treat Abu Muhammad, then Abu Muhammad will be sitting alongside them. He'll be working, providing for them as a family. However, they didn't have enough financials to cure him and give him the right treatment for him to be alongside them. Brothers and sisters, your donations will ensure that they'll have the education that they need. They'll have the food. They'll have a roof over their heads. Brothers, sisters, give, donate, and contribute. Let's make a change now. Give the gift of hope. Charity begins with a single act of kindness. Donate today. Um Sajjad lives with her six children. Um Sajjad has passed away from a stroke. Brothers and sisters, we are here, and honestly, I think the situation, the scene speaks for itself. There's entrance to bathrooms, to 